Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm gonna to show you how to take the Pocket Go S30 and turn it into a better console. By that, we're gonna change the themes, we're gonna update the emulators, and then improve the graphics for it as well. And on top of that, we're gonna add new systems that were not previously available on the SD card that ships with the device. Now, if you own a Pocket Go S30, you've probably looked through the menus and realized that everything is just poorly organized. Everything's really haphazard. It doesn't really make sense in terms of the order of the systems. So I've gone through and I've changed all that for you. I've updated the wallpapers as well, as you can see here, which kind of gives it a whole new theme. And then also, like I mentioned before, I've done a lot of backend improvements. And I put it all together into a handy downloadable package that you can just move over to your SD card and update everything in a matter of minutes. On top of that, I'm gonna show you how to add your own box art and game preview videos if you wanna have that while you're navigating through the device. So without any further delay, let's get to it. Now, first things first, I recommend you go to the written guide that's linked below because it's gonna have instructions on how to back up the stock SD card. Now, honestly, the SD card that comes with your device doesn't have any firmware on it. The firmware is actually flashed on the device itself. So all you actually have to do to back up your SD card is just transfer those files over to your computer because the SD card is really just used as storage space. So you can just move them over to your computer and then you now have a copy of your SD card. And then what I would recommend you do, get a new SD card, a reliable one, maybe a 128 gig card, and then just drag those files over onto that new card. And there you are, you've made a new SD card for your device. No need to flash an image with the Pocket Go S30. So let me show you all the systems that are included in this add-on pack. We have Final Burn Neo, MAME 2003 Plus, Neo Geo, Nintendo Entertainment System, Famicom Disk System, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Game & Watch, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Sega 32X, Sega Dreamcast, and Sega Game Gear. Also, we have Sony PlayStation, PlayStation Portable, TurboGrafx-16, TurboGrafx CD, Neo Geo Pocket Color, and Wonder Swan Color. And there may be more that I can add here in the future, but for now, that's what I'm including in this add-on pack. So I'll have a written guide linked below, and I'll show you how to actually access this add-on pack. I actually made a GitHub page for you. All you have to do is click that green code button, and then download zip. And that'll download the most recent version of all the code. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and unzip it. And then inside, you're going to see three main folders, a zip file, and then a readme file. The readme file has instructions, but I'll walk you through what to do. So plug your SD card into your computer, and then you're going to want to update some files based on what's in the available folders. First up, let's go to the Sections, then Emulators folder. Inside, you're going to see a bunch of launch files. All you have to do is delete those at this point, and then replace them with the ones that I have here. You can see they're in numerical order, and that's going to put them in the correct order as you're browsing through everything. Okay, back in the main folder, let's change the wallpapers next. So you're going to go into Skins, Default, and then Wallpapers. And then you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to delete the old files. And then you're going to add the new ones. Okay, now that we've changed the launch files as well as the wallpapers, let's change the emulators themselves. So here you want to go into the emus folder or emulators folder. And then you want to delete the folder that's called Retro. And this is actually a RetroArch folder. I don't know why it's named that way. But all you have to do is delete that and then drag in the new Retro folder to replace it. Finally, the last part of this add-on pack is you need to open up that other zip file that's within the zip file. And that's going to have all of the RetroArch cores inside of it. So you're just going to select all of those and then just drag them over into that new Retro folder you made. All right, at this point you're done with the add-on pack. You can go ahead and close it out. We still have a few more things to do, but you don't need to worry about that zip file anymore. First things first, you need to rename all of your ROM folders so that way the new launch files can detect them. If you go onto the GitHub page or you check out the readme file or even the written guide I have linked below, you have many different options to figure out what the new folder names need to be. So all you have to really do is just rename some of your folders and then you need to make a couple new folders to account for the new systems on your device. Once you have all that done, just go ahead and verify that all the names are matching. And that's all you need to do for renaming your files. And then just start dragging in your game files. Now, one thing you will need to do is add your own BIOS files. But again, that's in my GitHub page as well as the written guide linked below. Just go ahead and check all of the file names and then make sure they're in the correct file location, which is in the BIOS folder. 
And there you are. Here's a list of all the supported systems that are available now for your device. And like I said, I might be adding some more later as I start to get better and better about figuring out how this console works. But for now, we got a pretty good list. I think there's 22 systems altogether that you can play. Now, if there's a certain system you do not want on your Pocket Go S30, it's really easy to remove them from your menu. All you have to do is go into that Sections Emulators folder and then just delete any of these launcher files that you don't actually want. Okay, so now let's talk about adding box art and other media. So if you look here into my ROMs folder, you can see I've added in all of my game files at this point. And that's what you want to do first. You want to add all your game files before you start adding all your pictures. So get your SD card all in order. Get all their systems figured out, all the games you want, get them all put on there. Then we're going to use a tool called Scraper. And it's only available for Windows and Linux right now. There's not a Mac option. So this is for PC only at this point. And I'll have links to all of this in my written guide. So once you download and install Scraper, it'll come up with a configuration wizard. What you want to do at that point is either make a Screen Scraper account, or you need to validate your current account. And then you're going to want to select for your front end recall box. And then click that folder icon, and then navigate to your SD card, and then the ROMs folder within that. And then make sure you click include non recall box folders. Now you have a list of all the folders it's detected. It's not going to detect every system, but it's going to get most of them. So just go ahead and hit next a couple times and then you'll get into the main window here. Now we want to add all the systems that didn't actually match. So go through and look at the systems that it did find and then compare that to your ROMs folders and figure out which ones are missing. For me, it was Final Burn Neo, the two Turbo Graphics systems, and then the Wonder Swan Color. So you just have to hit the plus button to add these. And then you scroll through the systems and then find them in here, and then you just click on them. And once you selected the four systems that are missing, all you have to do is hit OK. For Final Burn Neo, you actually just want to use the main one again. Now you have to associate these systems with the ROM folder on your SD card. So go in and change the path on each of these to match what the path is to your SD card. Okay, at this point we have all of our systems figured out. Now we want to go through and make sure our media is good to go. Since we're changing settings for all of them, you want to go up to that All Systems button first. And then go over to the Game List tab. And then under Game List Type, you want to change it to No Backup, Create New, or Override Existing. Now under Media, it's up to you what kind of media you want to see. Personally, I like to have just a box art. So you just hit the minus button to remove that first one. And then you scroll over here under Media Type to get your box 2D. And then if you want to have videos as well, you hit the plus button again. And then you switch it over to Normalized Videos. And those are smaller video sizes than the regular ones, which are going to work just great on the S30. So now you need to change your output folders. You need to remove the word media from each of these. So it needs to just say ROM root folder and then slash and then videos as well as images. Now, if there's a certain system where you want to have different art, for example, with arcades, it's not really good to have box art because it doesn't look very good. Instead, you want to change it to something like the title screenshot or the screenshot. And then you can also add videos for this as well. And same thing here, you need to remove that media folder from your directory. And do that for both videos and images. At this point, you're basically done. You can either just hit all systems and then hit the play button to do them all at once, or you can do it one system at a time. So here I'm going to do just the game and watch system. So I'm selecting the game and watch icon, and then I'm just hitting the play button here. And it's going to go to that screen scraper website, and it's going to pull all the media, including the box art and the videos. Some systems take longer than the others. For example, PlayStation 1, for some reason, just takes forever to scrape. But when you're done, it's going to give you some Final Fantasy music, and you're good to go. Now, if we go into the Game & Watch folder, you can see I have new folders here. I have an Images & Videos folder, as well as a GameList.xml. Now, this game list is important because that's what it's going to associate between the videos and the images and your game file. And if you go into these images and videos folders, you can see they have a bunch of box arts here as well as the videos here. And not every game is going to have a video and box art, but I would say 90% of them will, maybe even 95% of them will. And that's it. You can just continue to scrape one system at a time, or you can just do all systems. It's all up to you. After that, your SD card is ready to go. So now this is my favorite part. I'm going to show you all the cool things I was able to do with these new emulators. So for example, here is the original emulators you can see here, and this is on my prototype console. And you can see it just looks terrible. Everything's pixelated and just kind of skewed. 
And then here you have it with the new emulators using RetroArch, and they look great. Nice and smooth, everything is crystal clear. So here we are with Super Nintendo, let's compare Final Fight between the two systems. So you can see in the stock emulator everything looks kind of weird and pixelated and it's very hard to read the text. And this is the original experience that I had out of the box and it really was not impressive. But you can see here with the new emulator, everything looks really nice and clear. And honestly, it kind of changed my mind about this device in general, because now that I have every emulator working and it has such a simple and easy interface, I honestly like this system now, like I actually enjoy playing on it because everything works the way it's supposed to. Okay, let's do a quick comparison of Dreamcast as well. So here's the original one, which is in a low resolution and then all the text is very hard to read. But in this new one, I upgraded the resolution and then I also smoothed out all the text. So if you look at this loading screen, like it looks terrible. It's like a 320 by 240 resolution. It's just not impressive at all and not something I would ever actually want to play. But here we have a higher resolution and the text is much cleaner. And there's a tiny bit of a hit in performance, but honestly, it's just maybe one or two frames per second. It's really worth it. Now to be honest, I wasn't able to figure out every little thing. So for example, with Game Boy and Game Boy Color, I either could do a very squished image or I had to do a full screen image. So even though with Game Boy, I like to have the true aspect ratio, I wasn't able to do it with these new emulators. But honestly, a full screen Game Boy still looks pretty good. It's a three by two aspect ratio, but it's not the end of the world. Everyone looks just a tiny bit fat, but you know, I can live with it. Now on the original Game Boy, I'm happy to report that I was able to get some really nice green colorization added to everything. So everything has that kind of original look to it, and I think it's really nice looking. I don't want to spend a bunch of time talking about Game Boy Advance, but everything looks great on it. And honestly, it looked pretty good before, so no big changes there. But you know, one of my favorite things is I've added new systems. So you can see here, Sega Game Gear. I was able to add that one on here. And I don't know why it wasn't on there originally. Like it really makes sense to have a Game Gear on this device because it's a low power device. It's a handheld device. Like there's just so many reasons why it's a good fit, but now you actually have it available for you. Sega Genesis runs just great. As you can see, everything looks nice and smooth. Same thing with Sega CD. Now, just as a reminder, you do need to add your own BIOS files to it, but I have all that listed in my written guide below. But yeah, Sega CD runs great. As far as I can tell, Sega 32X also runs at full speed, so it looks really nice too. And then TurboGrafx-16 runs really well. I was also able to get TurboGrafx CD games working as well, but those also need BIOS files, so just make sure you check out the written guide. Now honestly, probably my favorite system to play on this device is PlayStation 1. Everything looks really nice and smooth, crystal clear, the sound is great. I really enjoyed playing PlayStation 1 here. You can see here with Crash Team Racing, everything's running perfectly. And I was really surprised at the performance of PlayStation 1. So for example, here with Tekken 3, everything's running super smooth. This is a game that's known to be hard to play on certain systems, and I had no problems with it. So let me show you a few more Dreamcast games just to show off that nice resolution. You can see here with Aqua GT, it's running nice and high res. And surprisingly, it's running at basically full speed, which I wasn't expecting. Now, not every Dreamcast is going to run super well. Uh, for example, you're going to have slowdown and maybe some graphical glitches. With Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I basically saw full speed, but at the same time, I did see graphical glitches from time to time. But I do think this is a really good solution for role-playing games. So for example, here with Grandia 2, the audio works well, the graphics are really nice and high definition, and the text is very smooth and legible. So I think if you wanted to play Grandia 2 or you wanted to play Skies of Arcadia, this is going to be a really good system for that. And honestly, I really don't know any Dreamcast role-playing games, so if you know some and you recommend them, please leave them in the comments below because I'd love to check them out. So PSP actually runs pretty well. You have to go in and reconfigure the buttons and you also need to play everything in one times resolution. So you can't upscale it to two times resolution to make it nice and smooth looking. You basically have to use a lower resolution, which is unfortunate, but you can see here with Ridge Racer 2, it's running just fine. I have a frame skip on of one, but other than that, I really haven't done any other tweaks. But you can see here, if I try to make it two times resolution and even with the frame skip on, it does not run well. So honestly, don't think of this as a PSP emulation device, but it does run certain games pretty well. I would recommend just sticking with 2D games, puzzle games, things like that. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I'm pretty excited about this video because honestly, this add-on pack is like a cool milestone for me. This is the first time I've been able to improve a handheld device so significantly, and I'm kind of proud of how it all worked out. 
So be sure to check out that add-on pack as well as the written guide I have linked below because it shows you all sorts of other things. For example, just how to navigate through the menus and how it all works, all of that's in the written guide below. And honestly, if you watched my S30 review from last week and you got a bad impression about this device, from a software side at least, I think a lot of those problems have now been resolved. Now hardware, there's still some issues. You know, I don't think it's the most ergonomic system in the world. I'm not a fan of this small and hard D-pad, but overall, I'm very happy with the software now. And because it's only $60, I'm seriously considering buying this for some of my family and friends because it's just so easy to navigate and use. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.